In John 15 and 1, in our last session, we found that Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. I am the true vine. Uh, Jesus said he's the true vine. He's the real deal. And his Father is the vine dresser. As we studied the trees of the Bible, I am praying, y'all, that God gives you insight on how he desires to give his sons and his daughters, you and I, dominion over the earth and not a thirst for domination. God wants us to have dominion over the earth and not develop a thirst for domination over the earth. God is the vine dresser and he is the creator of all. So we need to first understand clearly that God is, is the owner. Last week we talked about that, that God, we got to understand that God is the owner. When we understand that, uh, um, and we'll, we'll do a little recap at the end about what we've gone over, but we're going to push forward. Genesis 2, 8 through 9, and it reads, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant, listen, to the sight, and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Verse 15, let's jump down there. Verse 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, uh, listen, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it. Now, we're going to belabor these points over and over for a minute. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. These trees in the garden serve dual purposes. These trees, these I, there were trees, there are multiple trees, but then God, uh, he, he talked about the tree of the knowledge of good and and evil and the tree of life these trees in the garden serve these dual purposes they serve a natural purpose they had a duality to them and they serve a spiritual purpose okay the ancient symbol of the tree represents physical and spiritual nourishment the ancient symbol, just the symbolism of a tree, it deals with physical and spiritual nourishment. Trees symbolically represent transformation, liberation, union, and fertility. I'm going to say that again. Trees symbolically represent transformation, liberation, union and fertility you you build a home you build a, a nice building uh uh it, it used to be you know from the country we were just we were just trying to get houses up you know what i'm saying but now when you come to the city a a a store a business a corporation uh not just a house they're part what's part of the building is the landscaping what's part of the building they're going to put trees and saplings and plant seeds and hedges and shrubbery and flowers all of this this deals with transformation liberate it's a sign it's a sign it's a sign of unity it's a sign of prosperity fertility okay so trees dealt with the senses of man when we deal with this trees it deals with the senses of man it, in other words it revives and restores the appetite of man trees trees the wisdom we're dealing with the wisdom of the trees 
and then it stirs and stimulates the sight of man. We're still dealing with these dual roles. It revives and restores the appetite of man. It gives you the trees, the wisdom of the trees, and then it stirs and stimulates the sight of man. So tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You probably uh, as old as I am and never really understood what the real name of that tree was. But it's the tree, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's very important that we understand. And that dealt with the spirit of man. When we deal with that sight of man uh, was a test of man's obedience to God, whether good or bad. It gave man a choice to choose, select who he would serve. Adam, do not mess with that tree. That tree is significant. I've, I've heard people so many times say, well, God, God, well, you know, if, if, if you didn't want to touch it, why come he put it in the garden? That's foolish talk. That's foolish talk. That's just like saying you're not going to have a, a stove in your kitchen because you got a baby walking around. Well, they know they was going to have a baby. Why did they have a stove in the kitchen? Because grown folk use it. And you may need it later in life. But right now, don't touch that because it's hot. I'm not going to, I'm not, because you are an infant, because you are immature, and I'm a, an adult, and know how to use it properly, I'm not going to dumb my myself down because you have not gained the wisdom and the knowledge yet. Amen. So we have to take God at his word. We have to, we cannot, certain things are symbolic, certain things are metaphors and things of that nature. And then certain things are just what they are. That all of it is mean. They say the, the word of the, the, the word is so simple that a fool would not err, a baby could understand. So in sometimes what I find out is we get so educated, we get so philosophical that we lose any uh, opportunity and ability to become wise because we're just dealing with information. We're just dealing with knowledge, but we're not dealing on an ex experiential level with experience. With experience comes wisdom. With standing connected with the Lord comes wisdom. God gives us wisdom. When we're dealing with world dominion versus world domination, you must be wise in your selections in your processes, your thought patterns, check this out, and the words that you use. Amen? Because the enemy is just waiting. I said it last week. The enemy knows when God told Adam to have dominion, Adam and Eve, let them have dominion over all of the earth, over things, not people, over things things. So the enemy knows, Satan knows that, that you have uh, been blessed. Satan knows that, oh my God, put it in the chat. I am blessed. Put it in the chat for me. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, put it in the chat. I am blessed. The enemy knows that you are blessed. See, here's the thing. It doesn't matter where, whether you have uh, ascertain what you desire, uh, physically, uh, tangible things, uh, stuff like that. But you got to know from the beginning that the moment you showed up, you were a blessed individual. Amen. You were a blessed individual. So the enemy knows this. And so what he does is he begins to try to subtly, as the Bible said about the, the serpent said the serpent was the most 
subtle of all the creatures that God made. Listen to what I'm saying. Of all of the creatures that God made, there's nothing that was made that God didn't make. Yes, God made the alligator, God made the pigeon, and God also made the serpent. Amen. And so here comes Satan gets inside of things. He talks his way in. He possesses things. He talks his way into you. He talks his way into me. He gets us to begin to do things and say things. See, he knows he cannot get the promises off of you that God has already articulated. So he begins to change your mind. He wants to change your mind on how you view, how you perceive uh, your existence. Amen. Okay. So, 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 so. Yeah, I am blessed. Amen. Uh, what does the tree of knowledge of good and evil symbolize? What does this tree of knowledge of good and evil? We're, we're going to get to the tree of life in a minute, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Jewish tradition, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the partaking of the fruit, reward, a consequence represents the beginning of the mixture of good and evil. The tree of knowledge. When, 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 when Eve partook of the Bible, it don't even say fruit. We just know that trees bear some kind of something, substance. Uh, uh, Eve, the one, called it a fruit. Uh, God never called it a fruit. He just said, what did you do? Did, have you partaken? Have you touched the tree? Did you do something? Did you what? da 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 And Eve said, uh, you know, uh, she started talking about the fruit <laughs> and, 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 and all of that. So fruit, reward. The fruit of a tree can be a reward. It can be something good, uh, and it can also be a consequence, okay? So the mixture of good and evil. When, you began, when they began to deal with this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the mixture, when, when Satan gets you to comply make physical and, and, and uh, uh, a mental uh, 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 compromises with the word of God. The word of God says this, that's pure, that's good. But when you began to distort it and contort it, then it immediately becomes not just not good, it becomes evil, amen? While fruit symbolically he on the tree represents rewards. Fruit on the uh, uh, on another tree can represent a bait or a trap. So 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 that that fruit that fruit when we're dealing with this symbolic tree when we're dealing with the wisdom of trees. Uh, uh, Eve uh, 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 the, the, the 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 Satan inside of the serpent came in and began to challenge. Uh, Eve and say uh, that you won't surely die. God knows. God just lying to you. He knows the moment that you do this, you will begin to see like he see. You will begin to understand like he understands. And so even though he didn't tell him though, you are an infant right now. You are an infant right now and you are immature right now and you don't know how to handle this information. Do you understand there's some information that you handle, that you can handle in your adulthood that you probably could not or had the wisdom to handle in your childhood? When I was a child, I understood as a child. I spake as a child. I did childish things. But when I became a man, when I became a woman, when I became grown, when I became an adult, I put away childish things. There's a time to put away childish things, and then there's a time to not deal with adult things. And that's what's going on in the world today with our children. Uh, because I heard uh, Sister Keena talking about things on television, 
uh, all that stuff. Our children are living an unlimited, uh, unplugged, uh, unchaperoned, undisciplined life. Guns, sex, rock and roll, or whatever you want to call it now, rap or whatever, at early ages, at early ages. It used to be we couldn't wait to get 18. Uh, before my generation, they used to couldn't wait to get 21. Uh, uh, but now it's like it, it, there is no limit. There is no limit. And so our children are being unplugged and, and, and exposed to things that they cannot uh, have, that they don't have the maturity, they don't have the wisdom, they don't have the experience to uh, deal with or be able to make sober decisions. Here we are, we are living in a world now where parents, parents are saying, uh, my child is four and I'm going to give him an opportunity to feel to see if he wants to be uh, male or female. What? My my daughter is, uh, she she's she's young. She's four or five or seven or eight or nine or ten, twelve, thirteen. And I'm going to give them the opportunity. Uh, they're feeling something, some kind of way, and uh, that uh, I'm going to give them her opportunity. She may want to be a man. Listen, you can call a dog a cat all you want. You can you can feed him meow mix and and hope he has nine lives. That does not make him a dog. You can call it what you want, but nobody has that power over people. Adam, God gave Adam the authority. Before anybody was there, he began to make the creatures of the earth, and he gave Adam authority to name them everything. He named every animal. That's some power. That's some authority. That's some, that's some love that God was trying to expose to Adam to show, listen, there's nothing I will not withhold from you that I know you can handle. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you can't handle that yet. And somebody might say, well, Pastor, why come he just didn't tell him that? Listen, when you, uh, if you have a child, you, you know, and you, Mama, I want to go somewhere, so, uh, uh, Dad, I want to go somewhere. No, we're not going. Why? Because I said so. Well, uh, Pastor, that's not that's not that's not um, good for the. But listen, if you find yourself explaining yourself to a a immature person, a subordinate, every time you try to do that, you lose your control, your power, your authority, and their respect. Leadership is leadership. You, it's good for you to plan and, and all of that, but in the midst of battles, in the midst of business, in the midst of uh, the project, you don't have time to explain everything. Just do it because I've asked you to. Okay? All right. All right, so... While free choice did exist, listen, before eating the fruit, evil existed as an entity separate from the human psyche. Satan got kicked out. Lucifer got, I mean, Lucifer, Morningstar, he was the cherub. He was chief musician. He was the praise and worship leader. He was the one. He was the chief organizer. Because he, we talked about that in, the, in the earlier uh, teaching, he began to say to his heart he was going to unseat God. He was going to be as God. He was going to sit on the throne 
where God sit. Ain't but one seat. So because of that, that contorting of good and the word, it then it begins to be evil. And because of that evil thought, because Satan, uh, Lucifer, decided to run for God and the seat wasn't up. It wasn't an election. God is God. He is sovereign. He is our creator. He is our father. There is no one like him. There's no one next to him. There will never be another. And, and, and here's the thing. Uh, 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 because of that, just like what I'm saying now, do you understand people, some people, the enemy cannot stand that. They cannot stand for you to come and say, this is the inerrant word of God. This is the truth. And there is no option. There is no auxiliary. There is no other way, but this way. Say no want to hear that. And people, you, you oh, People, when you began to tell them and let them, there is no other category. There is dominion. There is not a domination. The enemy comes to separate. The enemy comes to categorize. The enemy comes to divide us. The enemy comes to say, it's, it's the Democrats, the Republicans, uh, 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 the independents, the uh the chief ball washers and the uh, tea party and everything else. And what do you end up with? You end up with a whole big mess because here's the thing. Dom Dominion is all about the common good of man, Adam. God is all about the common good. He, he's not just for uh, Americans. He's not just for Russians. He's not just for China. He's not just for, he's not against anybody but those that, that, that uh, 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 rail against him. He's not against people. He is for us. He's give, he loved us so that he's given us a, 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 an opportunity to choose, select, Amen. To make up your own mind. You make up your own. Check this out. Uh, God wouldn't send nobody to hell. No, he wouldn't send nobody to hell. He gave you your own opportunity to make up your own mind. Uh, deal with your own will based upon the knowledge that's out there and everything to make up your mind. You make up your mind. You make up your mind which road you're going to take. You make up your mind, your destination that you're going to end up at. So if you end up in a high place uh, 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 called Hades, hell, or something that is, is damnable, that is because of the decisions you made. Yeah, yeah. As you sow, so shall you reap. We're going to get into that next month. And we like to deal with that as it deals with money. But spiritually, 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 as you sow, so shall ye reap. You, you sow uh, uh, division. You sow lies. You're going to reap uh, those things. But one thing I find out about sowing and reaping, just coming from being a country boy, the seed you sow and the harvest you reap do not look the same. First of all, it's way, way more that you reap, and it looks different. A corn seed is a corn seed, but a corn stalk doesn't look like the corn seed. All right, let's go forward. Defeating dom uh, domination through understanding the wisdom of trees. Okay, so here's the thing. God didn't build Adam a palace. I said this last week. He didn't build Adam a palace. He built Adam uh, a garden. And this is very important. The more, right, y'all might want to write this down. The more plain and natural things around you are, the more gratified and refreshing 
your soul becomes. The more plain and natural things are around in your surroundings, trees, flowers, hills, mountains, rocks, water, the more nature is around you, the more gratifying and satisfying your soul becomes, okay? All right, so so he, he, he didn't build Adam a palace. He didn't build Adam a palace. He put Adam in a garden, and Adam was having a good time. For example, going to the park, getting in or on water, or just being around water, that's refreshing. Uh, the sight of, just the sight of water, uh, the sound of running water is rejuvenating. Visiting high mountains, walking in uh, uh, palatious and soft valleys, the simple things of life. That's what adds length to our lives, the simple things. Uh, uh, these things are the ones that revive us and refresh us, uh, 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 the natural things. You want your blood pressure to go down, start walking in the woods. You want, you, you want your A1C and your sugar to begin to regulate. Start communing with the Lord. Get outside of the house. Find you a park. Just just a few moments, 20 minutes, just out there where, where, where your body can begin. God can refresh us. Amen. They don't call it a rat race for nothing. We, you got the concrete jungle. Everybody got concrete. And we react. Children react. Children scores. I mean, it, it, is, it is scientifically understood that children that go to schools where there are trees close to their windows, they make better grades. It's refreshing. Okay, when we think of the most popular tourist attractions in the United States, most of them are natural, uh, meaning they are God-made. The most popular tourist attractions. Most of them are natural attractions. They are God-made rather than man-made. And I'm, t I'm telling you this because we're going to have victory over domination. We're gonna we're gonna have that dominion. You got to be able to take it all in. Uh, bring bring the plants in. Bring the sun in. Let the sun quit hiding behind the curtains and all of that. Open it up. Let the sun shine so you can see nature. So you can see what God is doing. Oh, it's beautiful when when the snow is out. It's beautiful when the leaves fall. It's beautiful when the leaves become get back on the trees. It's all of it. God is the master artist. He is the one. He's the great architect. He's the one that makes it all. Hallelujah. And we just have to, the enemy, what the enemy doesn't want you to do, beloved, is to enjoy your life. He wants to disturb your peace. Right in here. He he wants to disturb your peace. He wants to disturb your peace. You, you Oh, my God. Let me go on. Grand Canyon. Zion National Park. God made. Uh, two iconic things. For uh, 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 things dealing with the freedom of democracy and the Statue of Liberty, of course. But then we get to the man-made places. Disney World Resort in uh, Orlando and the Space Needle in Seattle. Those are man-made things. But they, if you notice what they have, the similarities of them, Disney World Resort, it has so much nature encompassed around it. It's, that's what makes it. It looks, it looks like it's God-made. Amen. The Space Needle is all out there. You still is is sitting out there by itself, but it's like you all you're looking at. It, it, you can enjoy the things better that God made. It gives you a better view. Isn't that something? Sinful man's flesh wants what 
he sees and what he lusts and he craves everything. Sinful man is never satisfied. Let me say it again. Sinful man is never satisfied. Somebody getting ready to buy him a Winnebago. I see you. Uh, 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 sinful man is never satisfied. Nothing that you can possess or achieve outside of the will of God can satisfy the soul. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 19. Is that all right? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Galatians 5 and 19. I got about five more minutes, six more minutes. Amen. Galatians 5 and 19. And it reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's possession have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Uh-huh. So let's go to verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. In other words, let our physical life in practice and actions correspond to the principles of our spiritual lives. We profess not to, uh, to be under the dominion of the flesh. We profess not to be controlled by the appetites and desires of the flesh. So our walk must become in alignment with the word of God. Wow. So, all of those things. Grace is there. Grace, yes, we have grace. We have grace. Grace is wonderful. We have grace. But now, uh, it's not just grace only. It, it, we have responsibility. You can eat from the tree of life. There are no limits. You can eat from the tree of life. Enjoy yourself. Have pleasure. God wants us to have pleasure. He created those things, those things that satisfy us. But here comes that other tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You have a responsibility. I have a responsibility. The Garden of Eden was adorned with every tree pleasant to the sight. That's that pleasure. And it was enriched with every tree that yielded fruit. In the garden of Eden. Grateful to the taste and good for food. The sight. The, God wants you to be around beautiful things. God wants you to understand that those things are for you. God made the garden for you. He made you. Uh, you should uh, you work when you work hard. You 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 need to be able to have some things that are enjoyable to you. Not have some things because somebody next door got them, 
or somebody else got them, and they don't know why they got them. And now you got them because they got them. They didn't know why they got them, and now you got them just because they got them. And there is no foundation. There is no pleasure in that. So God uh, was not only concerned with Adam profit and benefit, but he was also concerned with his pleasure because there is pleasure, true pleasure, when in innocence. You might want to understand that. There is true pleasure in innocence. And the enemy knows that. He knew that when he was talking to, to, to Eve, she was truly innocent. Adam was truly innocent. But, and, but the, he knew that God had given them dominion. See, see, the enemy hates you. He hates who you are. He hates why you were created. He hates uh, the, the possibilities that you can achieve. He hates it. And here's the thing. You can tell when you're close. You can tell. I know a lot of things happen. God is sovereign and some things happen. But a lot of times, a, a, a telltale sign of you becoming close to what God wants for you is the enemy will just begin to just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, and always on you. He's trying to, if he can, as the old folks say, if he can't draw you, he will drive you. If he can't stop you, he will try to trip you up. If he can't uh, uh, take away the education, if he can't take away the experience, he wants to take away your passion. He wants to take away your desire to want to even use what you can do. You may have experienced some things. You may have a great skill set. You may have a great anointing uh, for certain things. But then the enemy comes to just sit in your lap uh, through witchcraft and all kind of devices to just try to remove and snuff out the fire that God has placed in you. God said two trees, the tree of uh, life in the midst of the garden for man to eat and live. And there was the, uh, uh, the tree of knowledge of the good and evil. So man would know, listen, and have the wisdom what is good and what is evil. As, as, as if we look at that, there are two things that we're dealing with. We're dealing with permissive and prohibited. You know, uh, permissive. Daddy, can I do that? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, Mama, can I do that? Yes, daughter, you can do that. As long as you're saying yes, people cool. Have you noticed that? As long as you're saying yes, people all right. They all right with you. You you the best thing since sliced bread. As long as you're giving raises, as long as you hiring people, as long as you're doing all that, they fine. Oh, my God. We got a person, uh, they just, oh, they just as good as sliced bread. They give me everything I ask for. But then, have to say no. Have to say no. Ha have to, have to uh, uh, say not today. Uh, have to uh, discipline. Bible says those that the Lord discipline, chasten, he love it. You don't, you don't, you don't chasten people you don't love. You don't chasten people that you're not thinking anything about. You don't chasten them. You could care less if they fall over the cliff or whatever. But 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 people that you love, people that you you are you have partnered with them in their future. You want them to become better. You chasten them. You try to have a conversation with them. You have to chastise them. You say, no, you can't do that. You did that right No, I told you three times you did it. No, I need to make sure you get it. Right? And, and, and that goes for any kind of relationship. Any kind of relationship. So here's the thing. The trainer will always be the bad person. The trainer. Because the trainer is the one that knows what it takes to become successful. So when you're watching people training anything, your child, children, look, if it, look, you get over there and sit down, and I mean don't sit down. Somebody said, oh, that's just so bad of her. 
Did you hear how she was talking to that baby? I'd rather talk to the baby now while they are a baby and they're pliable than let them grow up unchecked and then the police busting them all side of the head and shooting them in the street because when they say stop, be quiet, get on your knees, they ain't because I didn't tell them when they were a child. I didn't teach them about authority. So which one would you rather have? We got to understand, and, and I find out common sense is not so common anymore. That's the kind of stuff. Uh, uh, they, uh, our parents did not have to give us a fireside chat about parenting. They just parented us. But now it's like you got to have a conversation with your children. Now, little Johnny, I'm doing this because. Adam, I told you, don't mess with the tree of knowledge of good and evil because you are not of the age yet. I have plans for you, son. I got something greater. You are the best that you can be right now. You start messing with that tree, you, you're going to have problems, uh, not just with yourself, but you're going to have problems with me. Isn't that something? All right. All right, all right, all right. So here it comes. Permissive and prohibitive. Permissive and prohibitive. Permissive, oh my God, uh, of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. This symbolizes the liberality of God. Permissive. God is liberal. Prohibitive, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. This symbolizes the sovereignty of God. The absolute right of God as creator over all the trees and over man to lay down the law. Fred Smith at FedEx has the right to lay down the law at FedEx. If you, whatever you created, if you created a business, started a business, you have absolute right to lay down the law. Isn't that something? Okay. All right, all right. We thank God. We thank God. Let me jump to this right quick, and then we're going to be finished. Go to 1 John 2 and 15. Amen, Mary, in Houston. Uh, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. I got so much, y'all, but I can't get to it tonight. Uh, 1 John 2, 15 and 17. And it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. God put Adam over the things. And he told him to love not the world. You know, you know, don't 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 get caught up in those things. Don't get caught up in those things. Love not the world, nor the things of the world. Amen. Oh my God. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Think about that. The world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eye, three things he's dealing with. The lust of the eye, and the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. So the world passeth away, and the lust passeth away as well. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Lust, lust. Greek word, epithomia, epithomia, uh, lust. It's a desire, which is, check this out, temporary. Lust is temporary. Love is eternal. Lust is temporary. Love will soon pass away. And the pride of life. Pride, Greek word, alozonai, alozonia, or arrogance. Where you get the word arrogance? The pride, arrogance of man. The, 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 the thing that you feel like you just can't live without that is temporary and then the arrogance of man. 
in Satan's first temptation of Jesus Christ in Matthew 4, he tempted him while he had just come off a fast and he was weak. Jesus was hungry and here comes the devil to bring you something that you really are thirsty for. You're really a longing for. Oh, I just been fasting and praying, and I've been praying for a, a, a friend. I've been paying, praying for somebody. I've been praying for some money. I've been praying. And here comes the enemy with, with, oh, you want some money? How bad you want it? I gotta wait for you to get it. And you be like, oh, this must be God. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You have to be so careful. You have to be so wise the wisdom of the trees to understand what's going on. You have to be mature and, and have experience in the Lord. Read your word. Pray with, pray to him. Have relationship and conversation and communication with him so you can understand what God is sending versus uh, the things that the enemy is sending. Amen? So, um, uh, Satan tempted him to use his power to make bread over for himself. Do you see how domination works? Satan is coming to get you to get stuff for yourself. Dominion deals with stewardship. Dominion is dealing with the common good of man. Amen? The common good of man. Dominion. Dominion. So, so, so the, the enemy wants you to think of yourself only. Us for and no more. I got to, I got to look out for myself. Nobody's going to look out for me. I got, listen, that, that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. You, you got to look out for the common good of man. Your brother, you are your brother's keeper. And have faith that God is going to look out for you. And he will. Listen, I, 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 got, I got more teaching, but I've run out of time. I thank God for you. And I just want to challenge you today uh, to sow a faith-filled seed. We're going to pray. I hope this teaching blessed you. Uh, uh, when I get a little chance, I probably will go out there and put a few another video to finish up this teaching and kind of summarize it uh, as well. Uh, what the Lord is doing, what he wants for us as it deals with world dominion versus domination. He wants us to come together. He wants us to be subjected to him following, uh, coming into a unity and agreement, a spirit of oneness. Amen. Uh, so we can go higher in him. Of course, the enemy, uh, every time, uh, a lot of times when God had a business meeting, uh, with the angel, Satan came to the meeting. So he's going to always be around because he knows his da his days are numbered. Uh, there are antichrist spirits in the land already. Don't be surprised and when the enemy shows up and shows up in all his regalia uh, uh, trying to confuse people. But 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 it's it's just what he does he he has no time so we don't want to follow him anywhere else but but we we we, we want to just do what the lord says do and beloved i thank god for you i am pastor andrew Papina, empowering you for life bible study holy nation church of memphis you get an opportunity you're in the area come by this place 3333 north old brownsville road here in the raleigh bartlett area this is a blessed uh place these are uh, uh, bless, this is a blessed family church with a global ministry. Of course, Empowering You for Life is here every Tuesday. Of course, uh, First Lady has uh, Perfecting Vessels every uh, Friday at 12 noon. We have prayer every morning, Monday through Friday. You can go to our website, holynationmemphis.org, and you can get information on all of our prayer opportunities that we have and other opportunities in ministry. Listen, I love y'all. I want to challenge you to do this for me today. Please, uh, my brothers and my sisters, let's come into an agreement and an alignment. Uh, I was talking to a, our church, and I said, you know, uh, we have to be wise now. When we do virtual, when we go to church, almost everybody's going to give something. They're going to give a dollar, 50 cent, 20 cent, whatever, right? Uh, you come into church, you come, you're going to give something. 
uh, 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 but but when we're in a virtual uh, 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 platform, uh, people come, they enjoy the ministry, they're fed, they're blessed. I know they are. The word never goes out and comes back void. They, they, they are empowered, refreshed, revitalized. But it's so easy if you are not connected with the ministry officially, if you're not a member, uh, uh, something like that. Then you say, oh, okay, that was great. You know, we watch it like television, but you pay your cable bill. Yes, you do. You pay your cable bill. You pay your cable bill, Lord Jesus. You pay cable bills and all that stuff. You pay Netflix, Stars, uh, Hulu, uh, Apollo, um, Fire Stick, and everything else, right? So here's the thing. Don't do God like that. You're watching. Uh, God is blessing you through this medium. Please, uh, my brothers and sisters, share with us. Uh, I, don't, I don't give people an amount because I believe that God will give you an amount. And I want you to do that today. Uh, you'll see at a, at later on how to sow, and I guess I can show it. So I thank God. I thank God for you. Uh, we're getting ready to get out here. But don't, uh, if you didn't get those things, uh, First Lady <clears throat> will uh, come in a moment, and she will let you know uh, what you need to do. I thank God for you, and let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for these that have... Uh, uh, receive the word from you this evening. God, I thank you for them. Continue to bless them, their families, God, their businesses, their careers, their jobs. God, just continue to their educational exploits, whatever it is, training. God, just continue to bless their health. God, hallelujah. Bind the enemy in the area of health, God. COVID, find the enemy. Hallelujah. That bacterial spirit, God, bind the enemy now in the name of of Jesus. God, we say thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for uh, the vaccine. We thank you for the scientists. We thank you for the intelligence that you give us and give men to have dominion for the common good. Amen. Amen. And for those that are sowing, God, we thank you. Bless them some 36 to 100 fold. Those that don't have it to give, God, let them be able to give next time. All this we ask in your son Jesus' name. And until next time, I just want to tell you this, everything, and I mean everything, is going to be. Us on our social media, Pastor Andrew Papiner is always teaching the word of God. Uh, our Bible study is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights, and then on Sundays at 10 a.m. You do not want to miss it. There is a word in the house just for you, for your everyday living. Also want to encourage you to sow a seed. We do ministry here at Holy Nation, and this is good ground. We go out into the communities, and we believe in reaching the families. Uh, that is the parents, the children, the grandparents. But we believe in reaching into the community and sowing back and sowing into ministry. Just go to Giveify on, on, on our website. I think the information should be there at the bottom. Go out, sow a seed. This is good ground. We look forward to seeing you at the nation soon.